Welcome back. This is Adventures with Dr. Joe. Let's do a complete utility trailer rebuild. This is one I purchased a number of years ago, more than a decade, and it's got some real problems. The nose wheel fell off. The floorboards are rotting and there's a hole in there. And there's a lot of lichen and other things that need to be cleaned up. And the spare tire was just bolted onto this angle iron so it puts a crease in it and a groove i want to put a real tire carrier on it so we're going to clean it up i've already replaced the nose wheel we're going to remove all the boards and get them fitted properly and we're going to have a really high quality spare tire carrier and this should tune this trailer up for quite a while the nose wheel already came off as i've said and i've replaced it with this one i purchased at northern tool which is quite good it's a very nice trailer, heavy duty, but unfortunately the decking has seen better days. You can see it's broken through and all of these boards are rotten. An interesting thing is that the boards are tucked underneath this angle iron on each side. And I've seen one person who redecked their trailer cut a section of this out and then rewelded it. That's probably not a great idea because the weld on the inside is going to be rusting and a problem. So we're going to take all the decking off, clean off the gutter, repaint it, get it all tuned up and then replace the decking, put the D-rings back on and then get a, get a really high quality tire carrier. So I went out and purchased some pressure treated wood to replace the deck. And I also bought new tires. These were just nylon Chinese Wanda tires. They were terrible. I've replaced them with Goodyear 8 ply. It's a significantly wider, better tire, and it should get tremendous mileage. I had it balanced, had them both like my tires balanced. So this should really serve me well. I also have tire pressure sensors that go into the truck and I know what the pressure and temperature is. So first thing we're going to do is pressure wash this. I'm going to take the D-rings out, cut the boards, pull all the boards out, get rid of those and then start to replace these uh, new boards which are very wet very heavy uh, and unfortunately they're 16 feet long so they need to be shortened by about two feet but we'll take care of all that and then while i got all the boards off i wanted to be sure the wiring was really good for the all the trailer lights the license plate lights be sure that's snugged up and i don't want to mess with that again at this point I've taken all of the uh, old boards off that you can see. I've cut this with the uh, Sawzall and I'm pulling out all these old screws trying to get rid of those. Uh, many were broken off and then after these boards were cut they, cu they come out from underneath the uh, angle irons as you can see here. This is the stack of the old wood that I removed. When I took the boards off many of the screws broke so I've used a vice grip to get a really strong grip on these broken off screws and then heated them dramatically with this map gas. Way hotter than propane or butane. And then I could turn them out and use the same holes again, drilled from underneath to go into the new boards. And then just a little movement to get it, there it goes, get it going. They all broke off, I ground them flush, and after I take these out, I'm gonna paint this like I've done here. And here's that. 
broken off screw head. We'll do those for the remainder and paint them. Now all of the boards have been removed as you can see and I'm going to grind the angles and clean everything up. You can see the wiring is just hanging. It doesn't have enough zip ties. So I was going to put a few extra in here. And to do that, you need to drill a hole. Snug it up. And we'll put another one there and a couple more here and we'll be done with that. So I've got eight of the planks on the trailer, which is great. The distance between one end and the other is 14 feet. And I measured the, uh, the one intact board that I took off and it was 14 feet minus an inch. So I've cut these to that length. <laughs> and then for the last two, we need to do a little trickery. And this is before we start getting into the flexion of the final three boards that are in the center. Let me do a diagram and show you. So for the seventh board, I just needed to take a little edge off. And that's, that got me to where I wanted to be. But for the eighth board, I had to take a little edge off this way and a little edge off this way. And I was able to get that to fit with a little persuasion. So now we've got eight boards, one more two by eight, and two two by six that we'll cut to length. And we're going to flex these and get these to wedge in. Because remember, the ends of the boards are beneath that metal flange, that metal stripe. Let's take a close up of that. See how those boards are tucked up beneath that metal edge? That keeps the boards from warping or changing, keeps them all nice and tidy, but then becomes a little bit of a challenge for the final three boards to be put in. That's why we're gonna set one end, lift them up on a jack in the center, getting them in the end, and then letting go of the jack. So at this point we're using a large angle grinder to take the edge off the boards and give them a bit of a more narrow angled uh, end which allows that to slip under those angle irons more easily. Careful with these angle grinders, they're very dangerous. Ear protection, eye protection, mandatory, but you can see we're just taking the edge off the final three boards, 2x8 and 2 2x6. So I got the first one to work, pinned it in, now I'll put the jack in the middle of the trailer, lifted it up, got used that Berkey bar just to get it there, and then lowered it, fit right in there. Now we'll just hold it up temporarily and put the put the jack beneath it. Last time was about this height. We'll just check.
You don't even need it that high. Here we go. So we got it in. Put the Berkey bar here to hold it and support it. Lower the jack. Take the jack out. Voila. The pipe clamps were necessary because the pressure treated wood was a little too wide. The 2x6 would not fit in. And this gave me the widest space possible. So I've had the pipe clamps on all night. And the gap is still not wide enough so we're gonna to have to cut down the final board so I've measured it every two feet and it varies between five and a quarter and, and just slightly less than five so I'm going to I mark the I mark the board to be cut with a marker and now I'm going to use a chalk line to snap a line on this and basically cut it to length but cut it in a way where it's slightly tapered so that where it doesn't quite fit I can wedge it in with these uh, like the, the Berkey bar and these other pry bars and get that baby to fit in there it'll be tight but I, I bet you a dollar in the next three or four months as the pressure treating evaporates this is going to loosen up which is fine but right now we got to get this final piece in so we can close up this project for this there we go so we'll cut this now with a slight taper Again, tapering in, which will adjust the, the base of this just slightly and taper that in. We've cut the board, it was a ripping cut. That uh, little portable Ryobi circle saw did a remarkable job. It did burn through one of the big batteries, so I replaced the battery, but it cut and it cut all the way without really bogging down too much. As long as you kept it straight in line, it worked well. So you can see the, the angle that we cut in there that's gonna hopefully help us get that final board wedged in there. So I'll have to deal with those, but okay, it fits. Now we'll just get this little persuader in here. We'll lower it down. I moved the jack down a little bit, got the pipe clamps off. Now this will sneak in here even more. Great. Now, <laughs> go on. That deck is done. Now we just got to screw it in. I'm going to drill the holes from below by lifting it up on the tractor and securing these boards and our deck is complete. So I lifted the trailer up and drilled a lot of the holes on the closest beam but the other ones I did when the trailer was done. Now to attach the deck I'm using these 3 inch T30 quarter inch diameter trailer deck bolts. They go through the wood and cut threads into the metal. 
but because we bumped up to a quarter inch, we need to use a 7 seconds inch drill bit to drill through those holes and enlarge the hole in the metal frame just a little bit. And I'm using an impact hammer to drive these, and so far so good. Boy, that works well. You can hear it when it catches the metal. It makes the threads and then just goes. So we have 66 of these screws to put in. And when we're done, we'll have the deck completed. Let's install some D-rings on this trailer to make it much more useful. These D-rings have a really nice ability to really lock in. And interesting, they have one other feature that I want to share with you. It's a drain hole to prevent rust on this. So the first thing we want to do is line this up so that we don't drill into a, into a metal frame. So I'm feeling beneath it, that should be good. There's that. We'll pass the bolt through there. Now we've got a flat locking washer and a nut. Get those secured. Once those are on, we'll drill a hole for the drainage so that no water stands here in this cup. So I've got it all put together. I'm going to tighten it down with the ratchet. These things are remarkably useful and strong. Because there it goes. Because these boards are cupped under this steel bar. This has tremendous strength. Now we're going to drill the final hole here. That's a drain hole. We'll get a close-up of that. So water can collect in here, but that drain hole allows for any water to weep out of there to prevent standing water and rusting. So it's really a clever, it's a clever idea, very simple. Well, we've successfully completed the trailer rebuild. Took all the old decking off, got the uh, pressure treated here, got it tucked underneath the uh, edges without having to cut any or breaking any welds. That's not necessary. Have our D-handles, D our D-links installed for tie-downs. Have the new tire carrier on, which is great. We looked at the wheel bearings. They look really nice, and I've got a tire pressure and temperature sensor in each wheel. We'll keep an eye on that. If the temperature goes up, we'll take a good look at those. But that's it. This trailer is good to go for another lifetime. So again, thank you for watching. Again, Adventures with Dr. Joe. If you like, please click like. If you wish to subscribe, that'd be great. You can click the bell and anytime a new video comes up, you can take a look. Um, thank you very much. Comments are always welcome and I do my best to respond to everyone. Until next time, Thank you again and stay safe.